the constitution of india preamble we the people of india having solemnly resolved to constitute india into a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic and to secure to all its citizens justice social economic and political liberty of thought expression belief faith and worship equality of status and of opportunity and to promote among them all fraternity assuring the dignity of the individual and the unity and integrity of the nation in our constituent assembly this 26th day of november 1949 do hereby adopt enact and give to ourselves this constitution good morning students i know you all are doing good and uh, i'm so happy that yesterday's uh, revision test you all have done well i'll be giving you the revision marks for your test as well because it's for 25 and uh, see a writing test it may not going to take much of your time and you can give your best in that because it's going to help us to revise the portions that have been completed okay and uh, today i just want to begin the class with a small quote by napoleon hill you would have been heard about this great personality he says if you cannot do great things if you cannot do great things do small things in a great way i repeat if you cannot do great things do small things in a great way which means see most of the time children we will not be able to accomplish great things we will not be able to do great achievements in our life when most of the time if you have experienced but i would say even if it's a small thing for us to do give your best in that and do it in the best way like if we are not getting i'm participating in an item i may not get the first prize but participation is more important give your best in each and everything that you do that itself give us great results so with this i would like to begin the class um last class we were seeing about the properties of colloidal particles you remember children tindall effect brownian moment we were seeing color of the colloidal salts and other things right so today we are going to focus on the next property which is charge on colloid particle this colloid particle i told you unlike our true solutions it is not that small in size <coughs> excuse me children so this will be carrying a charge electric charge which can be either positive or negative now why do they carry charge why are they carrying charge it is just because of two simple reason the first reason is by electron capture of the salt particle the salt particle in the colloidal solution they have a tendency to capture the charge that is they have a preferential adsorption of the charge by the from the dispersion medium when this colloidal particle is kept in a dispersion medium they like to adsorb the charge of the opposite in the dispersion medium which is called as an electron capture let us take an example where we have silver nitrate when it is mixed with potassium iodide say i'm going to add silver nitrate in potassium iodide what gets precipitated we get silver iodide getting precipitated but what happens this precipitate would like to preferentially take up iodide ion which is negative in charge so the sol will turn into a negative sol you are able to follow me children if silver nitrate is dissolved in potassium iodide it it gives us silver iodide as a precipitate with iodide ion which is being negative so you get a negative sol but on the other hand if i am going to add potassium iodide in silver nitrate i am going to add potassium iodide in silver nitrate what happens same silver iodide get precipitated but now this will be absorbing or this will adsorb silver ion which is positive in charge so the sol will turn into a positive sol in your textbook you have a tabular column with positive and negative sols given in the table 
th those are the examples it's better like if we learn the examples okay when we learn the properties the second reason for the charge of the colloidal particle is due to formation of double layer this colloidal particles they tend to form multi layer that is especially double layer how that it happens now that combination of two layers of opposite signs we call them as helmholtz double layer that is the combination of two layers where the first layer is formed means it has already been placed it is fixed it is not moving so you call it as a fixed layer now the second layer is a mobile layer what do you mean by mobile it keeps on moving so that layer we call it as a diffused layer the first layer being the fixed one and the second layer is a diffused one so what happens when these two layers are formed and they have an opposite charges between the two layers so that will cause a potential difference a separation of charges is created which will cause a potential difference between the two layers and that is called as zeta potential or electrokinetic potential what do you call it as zeta potential or electrokinetic potential and this reason that is the cause of potential difference makes the colloidal solution more and more stable that is the stability of the colloidal solution is also because of the charge in the colloidal particle now we will go into the next few properties on the colloidal particles arises due to one or more of the following reasons electron capture by sole particles during electro dispersion of metals the preferential adsorption of ions from a solution and or the formation of electrical double layer let us discuss with the help of an example how colloidal particles get a charge by the preferential adsorption of ions from solution let us prepare colloidal silver chloride by mixing silver nitrate with potassium chloride click on the tabs to see the reaction and the charge developed on precipitated silver chloride during the preparation of silver chloride solution if silver nitrate is added to potassium chloride solution then the precipitated silver chloride adsorbs chloride ions from the dispersion medium consequently the resulting colloidal solution is negatively charged however if potassium chloride is added to silver nitrate solution then the precipitated silver chloride adsorbs silver ions from the dispersion medium hence colloidal solution which is formed is positively charged the charged layer is fixed to the colloidal particle it attracts counter ions from the surrounding dispersion medium and a second layer is formed this is called the diffused layer in this way an electrical double layer is formed the potential difference between the fixed layer and the diffused layer of opposite charge is called the electrokinetic potential or zeta potential zeta potential is helpful in explaining the electrical properties of colloidal properties zeta potential has many applications in wastewater treatment plants the coagulants such as alum reduce the zeta potential of colloidal particles this leads to a decrease in the repulsive forces between the colloidal particles the colloidal particles collide undergo flocculation and then coagulation the coagulated particles settle down and can be filtered easily let us summarize what we have learned today now let's see what is electrophoresis that is the next property of colloidal particles what is electrophoresis we know when electro is there something in presence of electric field forces means keeps on moving so what happens here 
there is a movement of colloidal particles under the influence of electric field that is when electric potential or electric field is applied there will be a movement of the colloidal particles in the solution what happens there since i told it's an electric field there will be a cathode and there will be a anode so cathode will be negative charge so the positive colloid particles will move towards the negative electrode that is cathode anode being positive in charge the negative colloid particle will move towards the anode so each charged particle will move across the opposite electrodes now when this movement of the colloidal particle is getting disturbed when there is some means that you are disturbing the movement of the colloidal particles what happens at that time there will be the dispersion medium which is moving in the presence of electric field instead of the colloidal particle the dispersion medium itself will be moving under the influence of electric field so that process we call it as electro osmosis what do you call it process as electro osmosis so this is the process or the property of the colloidal particle which we call it as electrophoresis the next one is simple which we have already learnt coagulation or we call it as precipitation coagulation coagulate means forming a cluster that is aggregate of many particles together what happens here what is this coagulation is calling called as the process of settling of colloidal particles the process of settling of colloidal particles you get it collected over a particular place that is coagulation right that process we call it as precipitation or coagulation this colloidal particle i told you because of the presence of charge it is highly stable but when this charge is removed when you remove the charge from the colloidal particle the stability decreases now when the stability decreases what happens the colloidal particles will start forming aggregates that is they have a tendency to coagulate or precipitate so that is how you the coagulation process takes place now there are different methods of this process which we are going to see now each of them are important you may get any of that in your board exam so let us see the process of coagulation now we will see what are the different ways by which the colloidal particles can be precipitated right if you see the first one here it is electrophoresis we saw what is electrophoresis under the influence of electric field there will be movement of colloidal particles so they get into the oppositely charged electrodes and get discharged and precipitated the second method is mixing of two oppositely charged salts when two different salts like positive and negative salts are mixed in equal proportion right what happens they get neutralized because positive and negative they tend to get neutralized and then they get precipitated that type of precipitation or coagulation we call it as mutual coagulation the third method is boiling when any salt is boiled what happens the adsorption layer that is adsorbed layer it gets disturbed because of the collision that is hitting of the molecules from the dispersion medium the dispersion medium molecules will interact with the adsorbed layer and it causes collision that is there will be a continuous hitting of the molecules so that will reduce the charge of the colloidal particle they become unstable and then they get precipitated the next one is which we have already seen persistent dialysis what happens in dialysis we know when electrolytes are present they have to be removed but if they are present in some little traces it is good because that increases the stability of the colloidal salt but here when you do continuous dialysis what happens even the traces of electrolytes are removed so when they are removed what happens the salt becomes unstable and then they coagulate or we'll say precipitated then the next method is addition of electrolytes it's a very important children frequently asked a question when an electrolyte is added the colloidal particle will try to interact with the ion from the electrolyte what happens when they interact they get neutralized because of the interaction of the opposite charge ions 
then they become unstable and precipitate so the ion which is responsible for this neutralization to occur we call that ion as coagulating ion or flocculating ion what is the only property is that greater the valency of the ion stronger will be the power of the precipitation like if i have phosphate 3 minus sulfate 2 minus chloride 1 minus 3 minus will be having greater valency so that will have the greater flocculating power or i will say precipitation power this is very important we get often in one mark question right so with this the uh, methods of coagulation or i would say precipitation process is getting over now we'll just focus on lyophobic and lyophilic salts how it is acting as a protective layer and then we'll get into emulsion coagulation of lyophilic salts now lyophilic and lyophobic is what we have learned that is which is water liking water loving the other one is water hating so when I say lyophilic salts, actually they are very stable when you compare to lyophobic. But the stability is just because of two reasons. One is the charge on the salt, the second one is the solvation. What is solvation? It is extensively solvated. You can dissolve in any solvent to a greater extent. That's why they are more stable. But how can you make it coagulate or how can you make a lyophilic salt unstable or precipitate it is by just adding electrolyte or suitable solvent when i say suitable solvent it's an example of alcohol and acetone when they are compared when they are combined together what do you get is a suitable solvent in which when you dissolve a lyophilic salt the charges get separated and so what happens the entire salt becomes unstable and you can easily precipitate it so this is how the coagulation of lyophilic salts take place. Now this lyophilic salt, they are also called as protective collides. Why they are called as protective collides? Because of its greater stability when compared to lyophobic. That is when a lyophobic salt is taken and when you spread a layer of lyophilic salt over that, it forms a protective layer. It maintains the stability of the whole salt to a greater extent. So you call it also as protective colloids. Okay children, I hope you understood now lyophilic and lyophobic. Now we'll get into emulsion. That is emulsions. Emulsion, which means a combination of liquid-liquid colloidal system. Where we are going to mix two immiscible liquids, a partially miscible liquids. So that one will form a layer over other or they get mixed with each other forming liquid liquid colloidal system there can be two types of emulsions one is oil dispersed in water the other one water dispersed in oil so in both the cases what happens in first case when oil is dispersed in water water is acting as a dispersion medium like examples you can take milk vanishing cream where we have water acting as a dispersion medium when we take water in oil oil will be acting as a dispersion medium example like butter and cream now what happens when oil is mixed in water actually it's an unstable emulsion because when you shake it or uh, when you just uh, do a small movement children you can see it forming two separate layers which means they are not so stable so for making it stable or increasing the stability we can add emulsifying agents so that the stability of that particular emulsion can be increased emulsifying agents are like proteins gums etc see this is nothing but emulsions when we say dispersions of oil in water or water in oil it's a natural case which we, we have come across in our daily life and they also show the properties of colloidal systems like brownian movement they have colors so they also carry charges most of them if you see they carry negative charge so these are some of the things which you should know about emulsions paint you would have already heard about emulsion paints right so this is a common thing where you can learn some examples of these two types of emulsions the next two topics are collides around us and applications of collides you can just refer that in your textbook children definitely i'll be posting video with respect to what i have taken today so go through this with this the fifth chapter is getting over so we will be meeting again in the next class with a new chapter uh, the sixth one 
uh, for our 12th standard okay so watch the videos understand it uh, be thorough make yourself energetic and then hope let's uh, meet each other very soon okay take care bye emulsions milk looks like a homogeneous liquid but when observed under the microscope we see that it comprises tiny globules of liquid fat dispersed in water on further magnification we can see that it consists of lyophobic colloids that form a protective layer around the fat molecules that are dispersed in water thus milk is an emulsion a colloidal system in which both the dispersed phase and dispersion medium are in the liquid state emulsions can be classified as oil in water emulsion and water in oil emulsion depending on the physical state of their components click each tab to learn more In the oil in water emulsion oil acts as the dispersed phase and water as the dispersion medium Ice cream and mayonnaise are examples of oil in water emulsion In the water in oil emulsion Water acts as the dispersed phase and oil as the dispersion medium. Margarine and cod liver oil are examples of water in oil emulsions. Observe the sample and click the appropriate button to classify it correctly. Observe the sample and click the appropriate button to classify it correctly. Observe the sample and click the appropriate button to classify it correctly. Colloids If you have taken an early morning bus ride, you may have noticed tiny droplets of water on the glass windows. These tiny droplets are examples of a fascinating type of heterogeneous mixture, colloids. Colloids are defined as heterogeneous mixtures made of two phases, a dispersed phase and the dispersion medium. Let us look at some examples of colloids we see in our everyday life. Click each image to learn more. The blue sky that we see is a result of naturally occurring colloidal dust particles. The moisture in the air condenses around dust particles. Being tiny and light, the particles are suspended in air. Here, the dust particles are the dispersed phase and the surrounding air is the dispersion medium. These dust particles scatter blue light and this is why the sky looks blue to us. Fog is another colloid. Let us see how it is formed. When air becomes warm, it travels towards cooler spaces. As it gets colder than its dew point, the moisture in the air condenses over the dust particles and forms tiny droplets. These droplets, being colloidal in nature, continue to float in the air and make the air appear hazy. This is what we know as fog. 
In fog, the dust particles with water around them is the dispersed phase and surrounding air is the dispersion medium. Clouds consist of several small droplets of water suspended in air. The small droplet of water in the clouds is the dispersed phase and surrounding air is the gas which is the dispersion medium. Blood is another natural colloid. It has numerous biomolecules in it dispersed in plasma which is the dispersal medium. Colloids have many applications in various industries. Most of these applications are based on the property that colloidal particles have a charge. Let us look at some of these applications. Click each image to learn more. Smoke is a colloid. It contains many solid particles like carbon, arsenic and dust dispersed in air. Most of these particles are harmful and need to be precipitated before the smoke is let out into the surrounding air. An electric smoke precipitator is a tall chamber that contains charged plates. The charge on these plates is opposite to the charge on the particles in the smoke. When smoke is passed through this chamber, the charged particles get attracted to the plates and are neutralized. The particles get precipitated and fall to the bottom. This makes the air leaving the precipitator much cleaner. Purification of Water Water obtained from natural sources like rivers and lakes contains suspended colloidal impurities. These impurities are charged. When alum is added to the water, alum ions neutralize the charge on these particles. The particles coagulate and sink to the bottom. Clear water is collected from the top. Sewage water carries charged particles of dirt suspended in water. These particles, being colloidal in nature, are charged and do not easily settle down. To neutralize these particles, sewage water is passed through a system of tanks containing metallic electrodes. The charged dirt particles get discharged and coagulated. The coagulated mass has a lot of organic material and is used as manure. The treated water is used for irrigation.